The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Hell was unleashed. Literal hell was unleashed. Through the night and in the morning, the mob terrorized Greenwood, torches and guns, shooting at will. A mob tied a black man by the waist to the back of their truck with his head banging along the pavement as they drove off. A murdered black family draped over the fence of their home outside. An elderly couple knelt by their bed praying to God with their heart and their soul when they were shot in the back of their heads. Private planes, private planes dropping explosives. The first and only domestic aerial assault of its kind on an American city here in Tulsa. That, that, that was gruesome. I, that, that, so, uh, you know, this is a long way from the word that was used for the last hundred years about the Tulsa massacre, which was nothing, nothing. It was, listen, our schools are like a curriculum of lies. And this is why, you know, that that old uh, cliche uh, that those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. The reason why it's a cliche is because it's true. And the reason why somebody thunk it up is because it's true. And if you don't teach this history in our schools, it's going to repeat over and over as it has. You know, this is it's like you think about 2021, and I think about Brett having to interact with a police officer yesterday and a Florida man who hit him. And I'm just wigged out. I'm just so scared that we dispatch Howard, who's, you know, six foot two and a lawyer and very white. And we have to do that because we're just petrified petrified about what could have happened to just a, a, a an ordinary dude trying to go to work trying to do his best to make a living and gets rear-ended through no fault of his own at a light because Florida man wasn't paying any attention now you know all this is going on you know uh, yesterday and I, I, I tell you it, it just dawns on me that the reason why nothing has changed, the reason why history keeps repeating itself over and over and over and over is because we don't teach in school the murder and destruction that is done in this country by white mobs. And you know, here, here, here's the evidence. Here's the evidence, everybody. You remember the Minneapolis Police Department during the Black Lives Matters protests? And everybody uh, that wanted to believe that the Black Lives Matter protesters set that fire were not only permitted to believe that lie, but have really hardly ever been disabused of that lie. The true story, and I tried to tell it to you as soon as we had the evidence from the FBI, is that the Boogaloo Boys, a racist white mob, are the mob that set fire to the Minneapolis Police Department during that protest. We we saw, I mean, we were so ahead of the, we saw um, Umbrella Man. Remember we used to show you Umbrella Man? Umbrella Man at the AutoZone store who was wearing all black, trying to look like Antifa. He was trying to blend. He was trying to pretend that, uh, you know, the other people that, uh, you know, uh, other than the Boogaloo Boys done it. And it was just also suspicious because a guy who, you know, had a pizza box, a young kid, was, uh, you know, standing there with a pizza box. And he asked the guy, who are you? Who are you? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? And he said to him, what are you, police? Are you the FBI? Like, why are you here? Why? And, and, and Boogaloo Boy ran away. He ran away, right? But Boogaloo Boy was busting the window of the auto zone. Uh, Boogaloo Boy was responsible for setting fires at the mini... So this is, this is the problem that we have here in this country. We don't have a, 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 an agreement with Fox News or with OAN or with lunatic fringy websites to tell the truth, at least, of what happened and then 
debate from there about whether their ideas have any merit or my ideas have any merit. Do you know what I'm saying? This, this, by the way, Tulsa, this race massacre that everybody's just waking up to, if I hear one more person on the TV tell me, oh, you know, I'm very deeply read, and uh, I went to school, I went all the way in school, and I never heard of the Tulsa massacre. I'm going to vomit, because the next one they're going to tell us that they never heard of is Rosewood, Florida, you know, Axe Handle Sunday. Uh, the next one they're going to tell us is they don't know anything about Colfax, Louisiana. That was black men getting the right to vote during Reconstruction. Most of this stuff happens around elections, I have to say, and that is why what's going on here is doomed to repeat itself with this man, the, the lead orange racist. I mean, I don't even know, you know, like how white people could follow, follow an orange guy, but they can't. This all, I mean, there's a list, okay, and, and it's in the homework today. It was published by the Washington Post, uh, and it is, they wrote, they, they, they put it out under the headline, Tulsa isn't the only race massacre you were never taught in school. Here are the others. And you know, only 11% of Americans read newspapers so I'm guessing some small portion of those 11% choose to read the Washington Post. So what can we deduce? Like maybe 3% of America is going to see this article today? Holy crap. Okay, so I put it in the homework. You need to see it today, right? So go to randyrose.com, click on the homework section. It's free. Just read it. The first one that you don't know that they listed is Colfax, Louisiana. This was in 1873. That was a direct attack on black men who had just gotten the right to vote during Reconstruction. And white men contested the result of the 1872 election. They contested it. And black men and black militia, oh yeah, they were in a parish courthouse protecting the local government from the white mob. Sound familiar? And then Easter Sunday fell on April 13th, 1873. And the black militia that was protecting the courthouse and the local government got surrounded by a white mob, and the white mob decided they were outnumbered, so they just set the courthouse on fire with the black militia inside. See, fire and courthouses, fire and police, uh, you know. Yeah, they're, they're very big on this, right? Uh, and of course, what they were, what, what Biden was talking about uh, in Tulsa, remember he said uh, an air attack. I don't know if you know this part of it or not, but um, private planes, according to what we know, could change, could change. They were dropping turpentine balls on the Greenwood neighborhood. That's what caused the fires in Greenwood, turpentine balls. But this was back in 1873. We didn't fly yet. So they just set the courthouse on fire. And as the black men who were protecting the courthouse and protecting the local government emerged from the burning courthouse that's when they shot them somewhere in the neighborhood of 62 to 81 African Americans were killed that day for the high crime of protecting their local government oh wait there's more there's plenty more there's a whole bunch of white mob activity that'll take you right up to now Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. My fellow Americans, this was not a riot. This was a massacre. We can't just choose to learn what we want to know and not what we should know. We should know the good the bad, everything. That's what great nations do. They come to terms with their dark sides. And we're a great nation. The only way to build a common ground is to truly repair and to rebuild. I come here to help fill the silence. Because in silence, wounds deepen. 
That's exactly what happens is the wounds get very deep. The scar tissue actually forms. Uh, and people are just uneducated in this country about the things that we should have come to terms with way long ago, way long ago. But, you know, there are certain politicians in this here country that find it useful to rehash these old wounds, to pour salt on these old wounds, to, re, you know, redistribute the truth and make it all about, you know, the people who were massacred, their fault. They did it. it, it, it th they're responsible for their own burning of their own city. Over and over and over. It just happened with Black Lives Matter. It just happened, which is why it's so infuriating to me. Because I'm living through freaking 1898, you know, Wilmington, North Carolina. What was that? Oh, that's number two on our list. That is better described as a coup d'etat. That was a coup. Okay, white supremacists decided that they were going to overthrow the results of a local election. Always the same exact place. Always the same exact place. Either at the polling places, right? All this Jim Crow crap. All this, tell me how many bubbles are in this bar of soap. Tell me how many jelly beans are in the jar. Tell me... Recite the Constitution from memory. Begin. You know what I mean? Always, always about voting. Always, because that's where the real power is. And it's happening now, too. It's happening now, too. All right. So this was 1898, not 1998. 1898, okay? Uh, and white supremacists decided they didn't like the results of a local election, so they decided that they would kill dozens of black voters and burn down the prosperous black neighborhood in Wilmington, North Carolina. So while uh, Wilmington was on fire, black families ran into the woods to hide. And then people came and found them and told them, get on this train. Get on this train and get out of town and don't you ever darken our door again and the prosperous black families of Wilmington North Carolina were sent out of town on the rail never to return get out of Sioux County by sundown I swear to God you think that's the stuff of you know made up movies no it this stuff actually happens and it happens over and over because here we are now in 1919 1919 Washington D.C. This was going on for weeks, for weeks and weeks. Police and the press, including the Washington Post, who published this list today, whipped up hysteria, hysteria, calling it Negro fiend on the loose. A Negro fiend was on the loose attacking white women. See, it's like a recurring theme all the time. You know, that's how Tulsa apparently started, okay? You had a guy in an elevator and a white elevator operator. They were both teenagers, both of them. Susan Page, I think was her name. Uh, they were both in an elevator, and I think he stepped on her toe and she screamed, well, Negro fiend on the loose, right? And that's what started the Tulsa race massacre. Okay, so this one, same way. Weeks, weeks and weeks, the Washington Post has these headlines and the, and the press is, is, and the police are looking for the Negro fiend who's attacking white women. And on July 19th, 1919, uh, you had these white mobs, posses, hunting black men, just black men, all black men, not the Negro fiend, but all black men hunting them. And violence goes on in Washington, D.C. for over, over a week, a week, People in the posse, in the mob, the white mob, are literally hunting people. They're hunting people. The only reason why the hunting stopped is because there was a long summer rain. And the posse, the white mob, got wet and wet, and they just said, all right, forget it. This particular race riot was one of the very, very few where more white people may have been killed by blacks defending themselves because the blacks who were defending themselves against the white hunters of black men, the black men had just come home from World War I and they were proficient with their weapons. 
and they defended themselves. And so you had more whites killed during that particular week-long episode in Washington, D.C. in 1919. Okay, let's go to Elaine, Arkansas, also in 1919. You know, this was a this was a this was a year just to understand what was going on in this here country, okay? The war World War I had ended. Spanish flu had begun. So we had a pandemic in this country and we had the end of a war in this country, and the black soldiers who fought in World War I were returning home to their jobs. Okay, filling jobs that men who didn't fight in the war had. There was a lot of resentment, and so the rumor started that black men brought home the Spanish flu. It wasn't true, but that that's what was going on in this country. It was a con- it, it, we were full of resentment for towards blacks. Blacks had fought in World War One. They had done a fabulous job, and then they came home. And this country was just as racist as it ever was, even though they were over there trying to fight for democracy over there and were willing to do it. All right. So in Elaine, Arkansas, there were dozens of racist attacks. There were massacres across this country. 1919, the summer of 19, it was called the Red Summer. Red because blood was flowing. And one of the worst places for this Red Summer, this blood massacre, was Elaine, Arkansas. You had 200 black farmers and their families literally slaughtered. Just slaughtered. Why? Because the black farmers in Elaine, Arkansas decided to unionize to organize themselves into a collective so they could bypass the sharecropping system the sharecropping system where you didn't own the land which they did you just got to farm the land (laughs) and make money for somebody else who then supposedly paid you well when the farmers organized that was it And 200 families, black farmer families, were slaughtered. The following year, Florida. Ocoee, Florida, 1920. Presidential election year. And white women could vote for the very first time. That did not go well. Clear. Four. Off Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air Force. Whether you're listening to Leslie Marshall each Tuesday through Friday or Brad Bannon each Monday, this is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561 270 3844. That's 561 270 3844. As for the act of voting itself, I urge voting rights groups in this country to begin to redouble their efforts now to register and educate voters. And in June, in June should be a month of action on Capitol Hill. I hear all the folks on TV saying, why doesn't Biden get this done? Well, because Biden only has a majority of effectively four votes in the House and a tie in the Senate with two members of the Senate who vote more with my Republican friends. But we're not giving up. Earlier this year, the House of Representatives passed For the People Act to protect our democracy. The Senate will take it up later this month, and I'm going to fight like heck with every tool at my disposal for its passage. The House is also working in the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which is, which is critical to providing new legal tools and come back to new assault on the right to vote. To signify the importance of our efforts, today I'm asking Vice President Harris to help these efforts and lead them among her many other responsibilities. With her leadership and your support, we're going to overcome again, I promise you, but it's going to take a hell of a lot of work. It's always the same thing. Oh, and this is what I'm telling you. If you don't know our history, our shared history, then we are doomed to repeat it. And it's almost always around voting that people get violent and can be led to violence and can be duped into violence and can be talked into violence and can, you know, try and, and stage coups and overthrow local governments. And now, the now, I mean, it's just so, but we're going to put Kamala in charge of it. So everybody, we're, we're cool, right? We're going to put Kamala. Kamala, by the way, her portfolio is like 
everything. Now, she's in charge of immigration, Central America, space policy. I'm not kidding. Broadband expansion and now voting rights. What is she, Jared Kushner? I mean, what do they think? She's Jared? She's in charge of everything. Everything. She's the vice president. Why can't she just do what Mike Pence did? Just stand and look at Donald Trump lovingly and botch the response to COVID as the leader of the COVID task force. Now, Kamala is going to be president. And you know what? Joe Biden understands that because Joe Biden knows how old he is. And Joe Biden is a realist. For any, any beef you might have with him about the way he talks or the way he's evolved or you don't know if he's evolved enough, is he progressive enough, and the, the bad votes he took back in the day and the friends he kept back in the day. You know, you know whatever you're going to say about Joe, Joe knows how old he is. Joe is very honest. And he knows... He's 77 years old, and he understands that Kamala Harris is going to be the president of the United States. I just don't know what kind of contretemps we're going to have in this country when Kamala Harris becomes not just the first black female South Asian person to be president of the United States, but also becomes uh, the replacement for Joe Biden. So this is why I'm telling you about all these massacres that happen always around elections, always around elections and voting and voting. You know why? The people in power in this government, they understand the power that we have. They understand the vote. They understand how everything is about, you know, all this money. So Citizens United, money is speech. Money is speech. It's how, it's how corporations speak. About what, though? About who they want in power. Oh, okay. So it's all about voting. Well, why do they even need the money, Randy? Why do they need the money? They need the money because the money goes on the TV. What's that for? To get you to like them, to vote for them. It's all about voting. It's always been about voting. It has and it always will be in a democracy that wants to self-govern about who gets to vote. Yes. So this was a Coe, Florida in uh, 1920. That was a presidential election year. What was important about 1920? Well, that was the first year that women, that's why Kamala is very important to remember here, that women could vote for the first time. Black Americans, mm, no, more of the same. Jim Crow, it was Jim Crow. You know, uh, legally uh, they could vote, but Jim Crow was in full force and disenfranchisement was just, you know, I mean, if, if you knew somebody who voted black, you kept your mouth shut because they could die. They could actually be lynched. They could, you know. So in Ocoee, Florida, you had women and black men who were now legally entitled to vote try to vote. Try. And, of course, the ubiquitous white mobs, they did the same damn thing. They burned a black church and they killed six people. Now, that's the reporting six people the truth is probably more like 60 people because the survivors of Ocoee Florida in 1920 they said that there are mass graves too just like in Tulsa and there are at least 60 bodies in those graves so the Ocoee officials uh, in Florida to this day to this day, have made zero attempt to verify that claim. No effort at all to find out. Now, city officials decided that they would apologize for this massacre. And in 2020, no, I'm not kidding, last year, they put up a plaque. Woohoo! A whole plaque, everybody. You know, we got Confederate statues just here and there and everywhere that all went up around this time. They all went up around this time. But in 2020, the, the black population who tried to vote with the women population in Ocoee, Florida, back in 1920, have a plaque. Mm -hmm. Ocoee, Florida was, until Donald Trump, the worst instance of election day violence in American history. Now it still has the awesome 
death toll. I, although I will tell you, that, you know, officially it's six, and the January 6th insurrection, they say five died. But the people of Ocoee who remember this say it's more like 60, and there are mass graves. And then, of course, you had Tulsa right after that, the year after that, Tulsa, 1921, Black Wall Street, a white mob descends on a prosperous black neighborhood in Tulsa, and over a two-day period, they murder 300 people, and they burn down 40 city blocks with an aerial attack of turpentine balls raining down on the city in the first aerial bombardment of black people in our nation. 10,000 black, prosperous black homeowners are now homeless, 10,000. And there is a mass grave that is being exhumed as we speak. As we speak, archeologists are digging. And they're finding, they're discovering bones of the dead. And the survivors are 107 and 101. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A brother and a sister, by the way. She's 107, and he's 100 years old. He's the youngest. They were alive. Now, he doesn't remember because he was a baby, but she was seven years old, and she remembers watching her house burn down. Viola Fletcher still smells burning bodies, okay? I hear the screams. I have lived through the massacre every day. Our country may forget this history, but I cannot. I will not, and other survivors do not, and our descendants do not. When my family was forced to leave Tulsa, I lost my chance of an education. I never finished school past the fourth grade. I have never made much money in my country. State and city took a lot from me. Despite this, I spent time supporting the war effort in the shipyards of California, but most of my life I was a domestic worker serving white families. I never made much money, but to this day I can barely afford my everyday needs. Just think about the wealth that home ownership actually brings to a family where parents who were lucky enough to have a home could pass it down to their children or their children would have property to rent or their children would have property to sell to pay for their parents' care if need be or to give themselves a head start. You know, the amount of wealth that's destroyed when you destroy 10,000 black homeowners' homes is exponential. And we haven't even gotten back to Florida for Rosewood. That was 1923. They were also a very successful black town. Six people were killed. They were beaten with axe handles. Police were obviously on the side of the white mob yet again. Yet again. You gotta know your history. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a segment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. Sydney Powell also spoke there, and I want you to have a listen to what she had to say. She was talking about uh, how Trump should be put back into office. Huh. It should be that he can simply be reinstated, that a new inauguration date is set. <laughs> and Biden is told to move out of the White House. And. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and President Trump should be moved back in. And with the ongoing audit, the Republican-led audit in Arizona, there is a lot of talk in the QAnon world that Powell there is playing into that Trump in some way uh, could overturn the election still, which, of course, uh, is false. 
This is crazy, right? This is crazy. No, it's not crazy. This is history repeating itself. This is getting people riled up. This is getting people to believe false and fake things. This is getting people to become a mob that wants to overthrow the go- Oh, that would be January 6th. Well, they want, you know, it worked really well. You know how much money Donald Trump raised? off of that insurrection do you have any idea now Sidney Powell why she still has a law license it's beyond me you know who doesn't or he probably does now but you know who lost his law license for five years five years Bill Clinton Bill Clinton lost his law license for five years for lying about a consensual affair five years she has been lying about the validity of a free and fair American election. She has been defaming a company that did its job admirably. She is encouraging and uh, countenancing private contractors getting paid to finger your ballots, official ballots, and your voting machines ahead of 2022, a midterm election. And she still has a law license? She's being sued for over a billion dollars by said voting machine companies, both of them, for saying that Hugo Chavez, a man who's been dead so long that you would need archaeologists to find his bones, rigged our election in Venezuelan style. I mean, what the, seriously, what the F? So now they have this new grift. Be very clear. I don't know why more media, you know, they, they follow me by about three months, I think. So more media will start to tell you that this is all another grift. This is a way for Donald Trump to make money to pay his legal fees, which are humongous, according to his son. His son, who says that, they are getting subpoenaed as a family over and over and over and over again because this family is being investigated in four separate investigations by law enforcement of the United States of America. Listen, I'm on the receiving end of it every single day. My father gets subpoena after subpoena. We do as a family. They attack us. They go after us for doing absolutely nothing wrong. We gave up business when my father went to the White House. (laughs) It's a grift. This whole thing is a grift. It's a grift to raise more money so Donald Trump can pay his freaking legal fees. Okay? Ka-ching, ka-ching. And he's doing it at the expense of not just his douchey supporters, not just the haters and the mob-like people, but also... Sacrificing our democracy, which has been sacrificed on the altar of hatred over and over and over each and every time voting the franchise of voting includes more people like women, like blacks, black men, black women. And each time, each time we show up and each time the people come, and the people speak, the power doesn't like it. And the power actually gets people riled up. Like Trump supporters need to be riled. They're in a constant state of riled up, okay? They're in a, why do you think there's people out there punching airline attendants because they don't wanna wear a stinking mask over their face and that is a private company that sets its own rules. No shoes, no shirt, no service. No shoes, no shirt, no drinks, no mask, no service. That is Southwest Airlines policy. And I mean, you got flight attendants like literally getting their teeth knocked out by Trump supporters. You, you, you have NBA players being attacked. Well, that's not new, is it? <laughs> well, you do. You have a, a very freaking angry country right now. You have people that just want to punch people. That's why we were so panicked that Brett was out there Okay, having to deal with law enforcement and a Florida man yesterday in a tense situation, meaning two cars smashed into each, well, one car smashed into Brett. (laughs) 
who was just sitting there. But now Donald Trump is going to do the summer reruns. What do I mean by that? I don't know if you've heard this or not, but you're about to. Uh, People don't believe it, but Donald Trump is going back out on the road. Oh, yeah. Not only is indoor dining back, not only is flying back, not only are concerts back, but Donald Trump's stinking rallies are back. Yeah, he's going out on the road. They're coming. I mean, here's the big debate in my head. Should television carry these damn rallies? I say no. However, they would be like a giant two-hour rambling ad of a crazy man who right now has to, you know, rant into a garden hose at a wedding in Mar-a-Lago to potted plants to get any sort of, you know, uh, attention, right? That's what he's been doing. Now he's in Bedminster, New Jersey. But Donald Trump is going to go back out on the road, and some people think that this will be like a two-hour rambling, you know, ranting ad that will show just how disconnected this man is from reality, uh, and it would be, you know, the best way to elect Democrats everywhere possible if he went out on the road. So I, I don't know if it's television that's telling me this, right, because they are addicted to the drug. They're addicted to the rush. There was a band, I think they were a great band. Most of you probably never heard of them because I was a DJ. I was a rock jock for years. And there was a period when all the bands were breaking up, but then they were regrouping and they were taking, you know, all the different performers from the different bands and they were making these combi bands like uh, Traveling Wilburys. Remember that? Yeah. Well, there was this one band called Mr. Big. Mr. Big. And they had this unbelievable guitar shred. It was the most amazing. So I was called Addicted to That Rush. And that is what America, who follows Donald Trump, is. They are addicted to that rush. Like we don't have enough crystal meth floating around in our country. They need the Donald Trump rally rush. Right? Stock up everybody. Stock up on your riled upness. Go to a Trump rally. You know, I mean, it's like, so the TV people, I'm, I'm guessing this is where this is coming from. They are advocating that, oh, yeah, you got to show it because this is a great way to get more Democrats elected is to just show how out of touch he is and how he's, he's, he's promoting conspiracy theories. And, and I'm sitting here going, uh, Donald Trump does not deserve to be on television anywhere, anytime for anything. When Donald Trump isn't allowed on Twitter and Donald Trump isn't allowed on Facebook and Donald Trump isn't allowed to do it, I don't know if his blog is still posting i don't know if he's still blogging who the hell knows who cares but if he goes out on the road so that he can you know hire script writers who will put things in a teleprompter that he will ignore which is i mean i don't know all things randy at randyroads.com go go for long Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. This ought to be called Coo Coo, okay? Like a violent coup. Coo Coo. I'm a simple Marine. I want to know why what happened in Minamar can't happen here. No reason. I mean, it, it should happen. No reason. Right? That's right. Lieutenant General. Oh, yeah. Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who was our national security advisor for like uh, four and a half minutes, who pled guilty to three felonies before his, uh, you know, he, he, his friend, the president, uh, pardoned him, is still a flag officer. And he's at one of these Q and non rally like conferences telling people in response to a Marine who can't say Myanmar, Minamar, why can't what happened in Minamar happen here? Which is a coup. Okay, it is a coup. It is a violent overthrow of their government. That is what is going on in Myanmar. 
why can't it happen like Minamar? And G- Lieutenant General Michael Flynn says, it should happen here. There's no reason why it can't happen here. It should happen here. Now, he's trying to walk away from that because he realizes that that is a court martial offense to incite the overthrow of the American government as a flag officer will get you court-martialed all day, every day. And Donald Trump can't pardon him because he ain't president and because it's a court-martial. And I'm not the only one who's saying that this man is mental and that he is a seditionist traitor to this nation and should be court-martialed. This is a call for a coup. And this is not the first time that Michael Flynn has done this. Back in November, after the election, he met with Donald Trump in the White House, and they talked about having a military takeover where the United States military would enter Pennsylvania and other states to redo the election. That was sedition. And I wrote at the time that that was sedition and should have been criminally charged as sedition uh, by Michael Flynn and also perhaps Donald Trump as an accomplice. Uh, Michael Flynn has repeatedly called for a military takeover of this sort. Uh, This is sedition. This can be prosecuted as sedition. Uh, The pattern of conduct, particularly the overt acts in the White House back in November, is not just one statement here. Second, uh, General Flynn is retired uh, from active duty as subject to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and he can be Mm court-martialed. He should be Mm court-martialed. And I can assure you that if a former general had said this during the Bush administration, they would have him in Leavenworth, Kansas by now, uh, ready to face court-martial. This is extremely dangerous for a former general to be calling for a military coup. This cannot be accepted in the United States of America. Seriously, dude, I'm telling you that, and 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 all of the contretemps uh, that happened in uh, you know uh, prosperous neighborhoods across this country, almost all of them happened in response to an election that didn't go the way the powered elite, the white entrenched power. Uh, envisioned it, with the exception of Tulsa, okay, and uh, Carmen knows of a massacre too, so let's just, uh, you know, let Carmen tell you about a massacre that uh, I know happened. Carmen in Philly, go ahead. Hi, Randy, I'm a first-time caller. Ooh. How you doing? I'm good. Ooh, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Well, this was not a massacre. What happened back in 1825 in New York There was a place known as Seneca Village that started in 1825. Uh, I don't know if if the Whiteheads were a married couple, if they were siblings, but they sold um, a lot of their land. They owned a lot of land, and they sold a lot of it. And a lot of the people that bought the land, majority of them were African Americans. Also a small population of Irish and an even smaller population of Germans. Now... The state of New York decided to create a uh, landscape-type park, and that's when Central Park was created. And through eminent domain, they took over, the city t- took over uh, the land of Seneca Park and displaced, like, about uh, 1,600 inhabitants of Seneca Park. And... From what I've read, current research is going on trying to find out if they can get an idea what you know what happened to some of the people that were displaced uh, from Seneca Park, Seneca Village. Right, Seneca Village. So what? 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 Just so people don't gloss over the years, you're talking about Seneca Village, which existed in 1825. Now we 25. All, that's right. Right, and we all know the Civil War wasn't until 1860. So that's right. Right. So you're talking about free free black men who were able to buy land in New York mm-hmm. after after 1821. Now it wasn't all black men that were able to buy land. It's a complicated story, but in, by 1821. New York decided, uh, you know, slavery was a a horrible uh, situation. Now, they didn't abolish it or anything like that. But in 1825, certain people were able to purchase land. That land is now Central Park. But remember remember that Seneca Village was established 
in 1825, 18, mm-hmm. before the Civil War, and the uh, uh, Central Park. But you also got to remember, Randy, even though it was a northern state, that there was still discrimination. Practice. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's a complicated story. However, they own this land. So, yes. Uh, I mean, to, to like... Eminent domain. <laughs> until like 1855, okay? They, right. They so they only it. existed for a short period, like about 30 years or less. And then... They were literally massacred out of their homes. I mean, it was it was literally the government, Tammany yep. Hall and, and, and George Washington Plunkett and all those dudes. They were they were real politicians. I mean, they were real power holders, white guys. And and the community mm-hmm. got along really well. Just so you know, the community got along really well. Oh, yeah. You had I've mi- read that, too. Yeah. You had midwives that delivered uh, African-American babies, midwives who yeah. delivered white babies, yep. they, German they grew, babies. They grew livestock together, fish together in the Hudson River when it was clean. It, it was a beautiful <laughs> thing. It was a beautiful Dig thing. It. Except politicians decided that they knew what they wanted to have happen, and they used the awesome power of the government to do it. That's right. And they still do it that way, too, don't they? <laughs> because people don't know their history, Carmen. That's why anybody who... I know. I only learned of Seneca Park, Seneca Village, five years ago when I, took, when I was with some friends for a concert in New York. And we were walking, and we saw, I saw this sign. And I said, Seneca Village? I said, I'm going to have to go home and look this up, which I did. See, we, we, we of good faith, we get a plaque. <laughs> but you know what, Carmen? You just proved something yes. that at least the plaque could be something like a key in a door that unlocks curiosity to go find yeah. our own history. Because, yeah, that, that worked for you. I, yeah, these are all true stories. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. This is actually very dangerous rhetoric. This is harmful. This is putting the country at risk. I have never heard anything like this. Uh, probably in the last hundred years, this kind of uh, just completely irresponsible, provocative language. I think Mike Flynn has a mental health problem, to be blunt. Uh, This whole notion of 15 percent of the country, by the way, believes in QAnon uh, conspiracy theories, Uh, you know, a global network of of Satan worshiping uh, pedophiles. It's just crazy stuff. So he has slipped into a different uh, realm. Uh, I think it is a mental health condition. uh, But as a senior military officer, retired as he is, to be calling apparently for a coup against our democratic country, mm. and he's done this before, uh, is extremely dangerous. Department of Justice is going to be hard-pressed to not consider whether this language is criminal in nature. Sedition is is the criminal charge that ought to be applied to Michael Flynn. And, you know, um, insanity, I don't know. Is that a defense? I don't know. I don't know. I think we should test it and find out. Anyway, listen, th- this is all about orienting yourself into a world of truth, okay, into understanding your history so you don't have to repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. So here is the summer pledge drive first pitch. Oh! Here it comes, everybody. We're kicking off the Free Speech TV Summer Pledge Drive right now. This is your chance to make a difference. This is your chance to build a little more media, a little more of an equitable world, a little more truth in it. Now, throughout the pandemic, everybody heard we're in this together, and I think we heard that a lot. But is it true? Do you feel that way? Many many of our systems, many of our institutions are designed to divide us, many of them, including now the freaking past president, the presidency itself, the executive branch itself, okay? We have the power, though, to change all that trajectory, and all it takes is knowing who really has the power and what the truth is, and then we work together. 
And then we work together and we build a more just, more equitable, uh, more uh, oriented future. It's just that simple. And that's what Free Speech TV was built for. So with every new gift you make, you strengthen the viewer-powered platform, the viewer-powered network. You help us get word to people who just happen on it. You know, they, they're like, I no. watched it on TV. I saw her on TV. I hate her. But at least they're hearing. They're hearing the truth. They might not want it to be the truth. They might hate that it's the truth. They could hate me for all I care. But at least some truth is in their living room. Some truth. Now, we have a frontline funder. Her name is Mary, and she's in Kentucky of all places, and she wants to help kick off the summer pledge drive. What she has said is that if I and Free Speech TV can raise $80,000 by the end of this week, and of course we were hobbled because Florida man plowed into Brett. We didn't plan on having yesterday off, so we're a day behind. Mary, Mary, I'll make it up to you. We're a day behind, but if we could do $80,000 by the end of the week, Mary will invest another $5,000, okay? So I hope that you understand that this is a great time to contribute. I hope that you're able to do that. And if you are, visit us at freespeech.org or dial the number, the number on your screen right there, 877-378-8669. 877-378-8669. There are different things that you will uh, you know, qualify for depending on how uh, generous you feel like being, but they will explain to you uh, at freespeech.org or if you dial the number, like what you could get for 20, what you can get for 100, what you can get for two, what you can get for $50. You know, there's all different, uh, we call them premiums. They're gifts that you know we wanna send to you for so that we can thank you and and I thank you and and thank you so much for finding us thank you so much for watching us happy pride month let's make this a really great summer pledge drive all right so what you have here is the same old crap and the only reason why we have the same old crap where we did have an insurgency you understand that we had insurrectionists we had people who were wearing military gear who were climbing up the walls of the Capitol, who were trying to overthrow the results of a free and fair election by hanging or threatening to hang the vice president of the United States for not stopping the certification of the electoral college votes. Now, Mike Pence did not have the right to do it constitutionally or by any document that we have ever seen in the United States of America, and he knew that. And that is why they were so riled up, so angry, so meth-fueled in their hatred, or whatever it is they snorted, smoked, drank, imbibed, I don't know. I mean, these people were out of their minds, out of their minds with hatred, really. And they were dead set on getting into that capital. Now, thank God they're a bunch of clowns, and thank God that once they did beat police officers, drag police officers, tase police officers, beat them with flagpoles with American flags on those poles, with Blue Lives Matter flags on those poles, which by the way, for people in Florida, Blue Lives Matter flags are not the American flag. Why do I have to say that? Well, I just spent Memorial Day in Florida with lunatics and fringy people, weirdos, who on Memorial Day, a day that we memorialize a day that we're supposed to remember not even me not even my dad okay we're both veterans okay my dad served in world war ii but he did not die in combat my dad is not a fallen soldier my dad served he was wounded he went to halloran hospital where he was treated for his wounds he spent a year there getting rehabbed from the wounds that he took in World War II, God love him, but he didn't die, thank God, on that battlefield. Now, he came home to my mother, and his penis still works, and here I am. Memorial Day is not about my dad. Memorial Day is not about me. I was in the Air Force. I served during peacetime. Scariest thing that I ever saw in the military was my hair. 
I should share that picture now. It's just too, it's, it's too humiliating. It's too horrific. And if I do, it'll be on the internet forever. So now, Memorial Day is for the fallen soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who died on the battlefield. And my idiot, lunatic, fringy neighbors were flying Blue Lives Matter flags. They were flying the thin blue line flag. Which, if you're technically going to say what it is, it's a defaced American flag. They're, they're, these are some of the saddest people, and they are the ones who need to be educated. They'll do it again. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. About 20% of Republicans in a recent poll said so they have supported the actions of the mob that attacked Congress on January 6th. And about the same number uh, say that they endorse uh, the, you know, the patch, crazy stuff that the QAnon conspiracy theorists are saying. I mean, this is where the Republican Party is headed, Joe. I mean, it's really becoming less the kind of party that we once joined and more like authoritarian parties in places like Poland or uh, Hungary or, or Turkey. I mean, this is deeply alarming. And you see before, you know, in plain sight right now, Republicans are essentially plotting to rig the outcome of the 2022 of the 2022 and 2024 elections. I mean, you see, I mean, you just had a segment earlier about the voter suppression legislation, which is advancing in Texas and advancing across the country. You see that the Republican elected officials who stood up for an honest count last year in places like Arizona and Georgia, they're being purged by the Republican Party or being having their power taken away. Mm. Uh, you're having redistricting going on. Uh, and basically, uh, the message that is going out to Republican members of Congress with the purge of Liz Cheney and uh, is you cannot resist the big lie. And, and my concern is, what, what does that mean for 2024? Because, you know, what if there's a close election again? What if uh, Republicans once again refuse to acknowledge a Democratic victory? I, I suspect that even more uh, Republican members of Congress will be voting not to certify electoral college results. And already you had uh, a majority of the House Republican caucus voting in that way, including their entire current leadership. So, mm. you know, this is an alarm bell ringing in the night, I think, for American democracy. It really is. And, and, and you know, this is all because people don't know their history. They just don't. They don't understand that America has been attacked repeatedly over election results and that we as a civilized nation in the 21st century, even in the 20th century, said this this is really, uh, you know, at the beginning of the 20, 20th century, we said this has got to stop. OK, this has got to stop by the mid 20th century. We actually codified voting rights so that it wasn't debatable anymore. And we started to turn things around by saying governments like North Carolina's government or Florida's government or Arizona's government or, you know, Texas's government or uh, Tennessee's government or Alabama's government, especially Mississippi's government. Governments that have a history of suppressing the vote of black people, governments that have a history of suppressing the vote of Democrats, women voters, they're going to have to answer to a new law called the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And they're going to have to, if they want to change any of their laws having to do with voting and casting a legitimate, free, fair ballot, they're going to have to come to the federal government and they're going to have to get pre-clearance from the feds because they've demonstrated a pattern and a practice of racism when it comes to accessing the ballot. Then all of a sudden we had Chief Justice Roberts in 2013. Oh, all of that racism. Oh, that that is so 20th century. It's so over. It's so over. We don't need those protections in law anymore. And he gutted the Voting Rights Act, and here we are again. Here we are again. 
the first black president of the United States, well, he was illegitimate, you know. He was illegitimate, remember? And who started that? Who started the birtherism? Mm, 45th president of the United States. Isn't that special? Isn't that something? And now he's trying to overthrow five, six months after the fact an election by hiring private contractors with no experience in elections to audit, forensically audit, ballots that have been counted legitimately by state governments under the rules that state governments set for recounts, for hand audits, for... uh, investigation of any contested election three times in Arizona three times in Georgia and now they're they're doing this in Texas they're doing it everywhere they are literally trying to make the 20 percent of crazy people in this country 15 percent believe in QAnon 20 percent believe that the election was stolen and that the insurrection that happened was a good thing 20 percent of Americans They're trying to make that 20% into a majority. Now, how do you do that? You could redistrict pretty hard. It'll help. But the real big kahuna, I mean, the, the, the brass ring, the top prize, the big cheese, top of the heap, voter suppression, never fails, never fails. And that is where we are again. They laughed at Trump because Trump tried to rig an election after the election and everybody thought, how stupid do you have to be to rig it after the fact? No, you don't rig it after the the votes have been counted and certified by the secretaries of state, especially the Republican secretaries of state. You don't do that. You do it on the front end and that is what they are doing. That is what they're doing. And every single mob-like insurrection sedition burning pillaging looting every single time that it happens and they say oh hell has been unleashed yeah well hell isn't really you know uh random hell hell is like a controlled burn of very very successful black neighborhood like atlanta see what i mean And every time you have the satanic cult of haters riled up in this manner, what you get is violence, death, and burning. Hell is carefully guided in this country by a satanic cult of greed and hate. And Donald Trump is like the perfect blend of both. Greed and hate. And America is obviously going through something. You see all this violence in this. You know, you know there was a story today in Florida. Of course, it's Florida. Volusia County, Florida. You had a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old open fire on police officers with AK-47s and other guns, we're told. AK-47s and other guns. can't blame this on music what are you going to blame it on TV CDs they are always always jacking around with our environment jacking around with our mood jacking around with our culture always always whenever the culture they start these culture wars what is a culture war It's taking an aspect of someone's way of doing things and pitting it against another way of doing things. Instead of saying, your way of doing things and my way of doing things could work together and do great things. They make the way that you do things and the way that I do things at odds. It's it's always at odds with each other and you have to fight to the death. But basically it's all about the power holders to keep them holding power. And it's a simple, simple game. And it's so simple that it works. You know Occam's razor, right? You you know the simplest explanation is usually the best. This is the simplest. Fomentate. Jean in Michigan. Hello there. Hi. 
Good morning. Um, well, it's not good morning. Sorry, it's good afternoon here. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. I was calling in about um, voter ID because I'd heard that um, people were going to get ballots without voter ID. No. That's what the man was just telling me. Who? No, the caller, the screener. She's talking about me. She hit me with that, and I pushed back just ever so slightly and then allowed her to go on. Oh, no. No, no. People people show ID to get their ballots. In fact, when I go vote, I have to scan my driver's license through the machine. So this mail-in balloting where people just get mailed out a ballot isn't true? No. There is something called motor voter where when you go to get your ID, when you go to get your driver's license, you can also register to vote, but can't do the vote without the ID. <laughs> I don't know who's telling well, That's good. Yeah. So who's telling you this? No, these, these voter suppression laws have very, very little to do with ID. They're, they, they're making her focus on ID. You know what this is about? It's about giving poll watchers guns. This is about a mob at the poll at the polling place, okay? This Texas law is very specific about these awesome new powers for poll watchers, and also it gives the legislatures a chance to overturn the results. That's what they don't want to talk about.